This week on Supercars Talk, once again we try to go racing in Darwin and discuss what the rest of the calendar could possibly look like. So, last weekend we were supposed to be racing in Darwin and this was supposed to be a review video, uh, but if we've learned anything from 2020 is you can't predict the future, you can only look at the past. Uh, so, something with border control and uh, quarantine times and blah 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 that it's for some reason disappeared before the weekend. Uh, but the whole event has been postponed a week and... Currently at this stage, we don't know there's supposed to be two rounds in Darwin and we still don't know whether it's going to be consecutive weekends or possibly a midweek race um, next week. Uh, apparently there's a, a gap in the football calendar at the moment. Um, apparently the AFL has been running a game every day for like 30 days straight or something and that finishes after next weekend um, and then there's no rugby ball happening either um, and apparently there's an election in Northern Territory the following weekend so they don't want to run a race uh, with while they're having an election um, don't know why it's not that hard anyway um, they have actually got fans going so it's a little bit different to what would happen in Vi I don't even think we could have an election in Victoria at the moment because uh, not allowed to go anywhere, so... Uh, anyway, beside the point, they're talking possibly having a midweek race to cover uh, a later in the day kind of thing to fit in with TV and because the sun sets later in Northern Territory, unlike in Victoria where it sets about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, which also gets you down a bit when you're locked at home and uh, not allowed to go anywhere. Uh, <laughs> Try not to get down at the moment with all of this happening, Dave. So, we're looking at two rounds in Northern Territory. Hopefully, this the first one is at least this weekend and we get to see some racing. Then, it's been confirmed going to Townsville for two rounds. Uh, so, that's going to be August 29, 30 and September 5 and 6. The next confirmed event uh, after that would be Bathurst. Uh, Sandown, not going to happen at the moment, uh, as I've stated many times, uh, uh, in Victoria, we're in quite a spot of bother at the moment, not allowed to go anywhere and whatever, uh, the teams, you know, I'd imagine that the teams couldn't even be doing work in their factories at the moment, so possibly if someone has a big accident, uh, on the weekend, uh, one of the Victorian teams, it's not like they can just, you know, get some parts made up down in Victoria and get them even shipped up because I would imagine under our restrictions at the moment that none of the teams are actually allowed to go to work because you can only go to work if you're classified as essential. Uh, although there's a little bit of a possibly a loophole in there because you can still like car dealerships are still open to service cars uh so maybe you could say that you're servicing your car and i you know i need a new rear spoiler or something like that maybe maybe not uh so we've got P townsville and then it goes to bathurst so and a lot of people are saying that Bathurst could quite well be the final round. Um, they'll have, under the contracts and rules and blah, blah, blah. Um, if we have the two rounds in Darwin, apparently that covers the that it's a championship. Um, so you can award a championship winner. Uh, not sure how that works uh, on... I'm not sure if it's three or four states that they have to go to. Um, the counting Victoria, we've got Adelaide, we've got New South Wales. Ah, oh, there we go. We've still got four, even if we don't go to Queensland. Uh, so we can award a champion after Northern Territory. I think Bathurst is still going to happen, kind of regardless, or, you know, not regardless. This is 2020. Um, but I think they're going to try and whatever they can do to get Bathurst to work. 
What I would like to see is have the couple of rounds in Townsville, uh, move down to Queensland Raceway, have one or two rounds there, go to Bathurst, have the 1,000, it's all by itself, and then go to Sydney Motorsport Park to have that final one, even if it is the week after Bathurst, but just so that Bathurst isn't the finale, um, and, you know, maybe have a cool Saturday, you know, when it takes all night race or something like that at Sydney, um, and then you get your big, you know, finale still in Sydney, uh, but it doesn't kind of take away from, you know, the Bathurst 1000 winner and the, the, the champion and all of that kind of intertwining like we had those few years where it was the finale. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is 2020. Who knows what's going to happen? I did a preview for Darwin last week, and then, you know, by the time... I, I think I made a joke about it uh, in that video that who knows what will happen by the end of the weekend. We didn't see any racing on the weekend. Uh, so, you know, between now and then, who knows what's going to happen. Um, last weekend, I went out for a bike ride, and... Uh, before I came back home, you know, essentially the whole world had changed in Victoria. So um, things are just moving day by day. So even by the time I post this, it might be totally different. Uh, hopefully there's some racing. Not going to do a preview on Darwin this week because I kind of already covered that last week and yeah, not much has really changed from there. The other little story I want to cover this week is uh, Team 18's come out and said that they're going to fast track themselves to the front of the grid uh, and that they're going to, uh, there's no reason why they can't come out and beat Triple Eight. Um, they've cited that in the past uh, there was Techno, um, you know, they, they were running up the front and beating Triple Eight in their own equipment. Funnily enough, they didn't mention Dick Johnson Racing um, back in 2010 at Slightly special circumstances this year, uh, but Dick Johnson Racing was running the old FG Falcons from Triple Eight. Uh, then Triple Eight had swapped to Holdens that year, had a few teething troubles, uh, and James Courtney had a not a smooth run, but had a good run through the championship. Um, and they mentioned Kmart Racing back in the big Evil Empire Walkinshaw days. Um, now there's a few differences there to what's happening at Team 18 at the moment. Um, the, probably the the big two, in my opinion, uh, budget-wise. Um, as far as I know, when Techno was running Shane Van Gisbergen and beating Triple Eight on occasion, uh, they, he did finish second of the championship, but I think he was about 600 points behind Wing Cup that year. Um, yeah, so second was still a long way away from you know, challenging for the championship. Uh, but as far as I know back then, Techno was still being kind of underwritten by Jono's dad, whereas now I think it's standing on its own two feet. Hence, the results have gone down a long way. Uh, Dick Johnson Racing at the time was being underwritten by Charlie uh, and they had reasonable sponsorship from Jim Beam. And I don't think at the time, with the Holden money and the Kmart money and all of that, I don't think there was, you know, any kind of money issues down in Clayton. Uh, the other thing, drivers. Okay, so Windsor Bottom, yeah, you won the championship. Is he on the same level as the top guys nowadays? Don't think so. Um, and Scott Pye, he just hasn't seemed to fire like he needs to in this category uh you know came in with a lot of fanfare in that and he just hasn't shone um techno you had shane van gisbergen uh who you can't doubt he is an exceptional talent um as much as people don't like james courtney you know, the guy made it to Formula One, and if it wasn't for that testing accident, he probably would have been a Formula One driver at some point. So the talent is definitely there, and he definitely deserved his championship. Um, and the whole came out racing, um, and then went on to HSV dealer team, and that you had Greg Murphy. Um, I don't care what anyone says, Greg Murphy, exceptional talent as well. Rick Kelly. 
whatever anyone says, Rick Kelly is an exceptional talent. Uh, and then Garth Tander finished up, you know, winning a championship there with them. Um, yeah, and need I say, um, you know, people accuse me of liking Nick Perkett a bit too much. Um, Garth Tander's, you know, on another level to Nick Perkett. Uh, so th- those are some of the key differences. Also, you know, in those teams at those times as well, the, you know, some of them had really, really exceptional people. Not to say, though, you know, guys like Phil Keed and that. Um, Steve Henderson is another one there at uh, Team 18 at the moment. You know, they're not bad people, but have they got the budget to, you know, take it? And you're also coming up against, you know, Ludo at... Penske with massive amounts of money and, you know, Jerry Moore and that at uh, Triple Eight with massive amounts of money. So, you know, you've, you've got to beat them in some way, either having, you know, more brain power or more money or probably both in this count because they don't have weak spots. Plus, you've also got Penske's got Scott McLaughlin and Triple Eight has got Jamie Winkup and Shane Van Gisberg. And, you know, they've got both barrels firing at that uh so you know a little nothing story that cropped up during the week uh you know probably spent a bit too long ranting on about it but i just thought it was interesting that they brought up you know two examples didn't bring up the whole um you know when dick johnson actually beat triple eight with their own equipment in the championship uh, but yeah i just yeah i thought you know you, you're getting a little bit carried away uh and this year is probably not the year to get carried away with statements like that. Uh, so that rounds off the week. Hopefully we have, you know, a bit more of a normal week this week, um, as normal as it can be. And there's some racing on the weekend and I can do a review next week. Um, and it could even be a really quick preview uh, before the second lot of racing up at Darwin. So until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>